sis. Hi. Finally, I get Hello. You. Finally, I get you on this podcast. Welcome, everyone. Yeah. My name is Bobby Rose, and this is Music Talks with Bobby Rose. I'm your host, and I love talking to people about their experiences in music. And today, as I've mentioned before, she's not a student, but she res- uh, recently graduated from UPM, the same university that I'm doing my degree in. And I'm talking to my sister, per se, Ainor. Hi, Ainor. Hello, Bobby. Hi. How are you? Everything okay? Yeah, everything is cool. As cool as I. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you up to? What have you been doing recently? Uh, so, um, I started a new job now. Uh, being a drum teacher... And also uh, doing a bit of work here and there. <laughs> oh, okay. How and how's the yeah. how's the teaching job? How's the teaching job according to COVID? Actually, that's what a lot of people uh, wanted to ask. Yeah, uh, it's uh, actually because of this pandemic, right? Um, it's quite challenging because quite a lot of people are afraid to go out and to let their children to go to the classes. You know, because of yeah, because we don't know who might get affected by this. So, yes, it's a bit slow, but um, okay. So far, still okay. Oh, okay. Do you have to like, uh, because in my place, we have to like disinfect. And you teach drums also just as me. So, in my place, I have to like yep. disinfect after every student. And I have to make sure, you know, no hugging, no touching, no whatever. Do you have to do the same? Um, we have to disinfect, but not every time. Uh, maybe the student lah, because I stayed at uh, the same place and also I didn't touch any student unless the student wanted to like you know um, high five me because some of them quite quite young you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. and also it's just a child thing to have a bond with them just to high five and just you yes, know play around correct. yeah yeah it's awesome and. Before this, you were teaching at um. What's the name of that place? Uh, Henry Gurney. Kola right? Henry Gurney. Yeah. What what what's the name of the whole school? The Kola Henry Gurney, Teluk Mas Melaka. Melaka. Oh Melaka. Oh now now you're in Johor. Now I'm in Johor. Yes, so, correct. So how did that transition happen? Like you were in Melaka, and then you moved to Johor. Uh, okay, um, actually, the work in uh, Sekolah Henry Gurney uh, is actually on contract. So, because of this pandemic, uh, our contract um, was... Uh, it, has, it has a bit of problem uh, with our contract. We need to stop because uh, civilian cannot go in. Did you know this uh, uh, Sekolah Henry Gurney is actually a prison for, for kids? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a juvenile, it's a literally yeah. sekolah budak jahat, which translates into like yes. a school for bad yeah, kids. Yeah, correct. Right? Yeah, so so um, it's actually a prison lah. So I am a civilian there. There's a there's a difference civilian and uniform. So uniform, they still have to go to work, but the civilian, some of us, they stop us from going to work. Oh, oh, okay. Mm, yeah. Alright, so before yeah. we get into that, actually, I just wanted to ask, and I always wanted to ask you, how did you actually yeah. get the job? Like, you graduated 2017, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, correct. Okay, so you did, uh, yeah, you did music, bachelor's in music, you graduated from there, and then you started that job. So, how did how did you, like, lock down the job? Okay, so, um, few of my friends, they know I've been struggling finding a job. So I've been applying quite a lot of jobs and then I've been going to quite a lot of interviews but I didn't make it and then suddenly I found this on Twitter and then I just applied, sent the an email and then they called me so through the interview call uh, I got this job. Nice. Yeah. And this was this was like a a process because I know Come again? Mm-hmm. This, this, yeah, this was 2018. Oh, okay. But this is not like a... Yeah. I know like a lot of government schools, there's like a process involved. You mentioned sometime a few weeks ago something about uh, getting a... What do you call that? The 
government form or something like that, like getting a... Yeah, correct. Correct. So is this the same? Yes, correct. Uh, this one, because uh, this school, it is not like an ordinary school. We have to, to get um, permission from few places. Oh, okay. To, to work there, mm-hmm. not only from uh, KPM. KPM, which is Kementerian Project Measures. Uh, other other thing is other thing is um prison, jabatan mm-hmm. penjara Malaysia, mm-hmm. and also another thing is kementerian dalam negeri. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of yeah. So we have to yeah we have to go through those three things uh before we get into the school. Okay, and I just wanted to ask yeah. real quick: Is MOE mm-hmm. Ministry of Education? Is it does it like yes, cover yes, all three? Yes, correct. No. It's, a, it's KDN, from KDN. Oh, so you have to individually apply. Oh, man. It's so yep. tough. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it is, it is like this. This job, Penjara wants us to go in. Mm-hmm. So, um, Penjara asked a teacher from KPM. So, KPM work on the work papers and send it to KDN. So, KDN will pay us. Oh, okay. It's not... A, yeah, that is why the three involved. Yeah, yeah, that makes more mm. sense. Okay. Yeah. That's so mm. complex though. <laughs> <laughs> like, all you want to do is just like teach music, but it's like so complex though. Yeah. <laughs> but but how, how was the teaching there? How was the... Okay, like first of all, I for, for all you listeners out there, I just have to explain that I love this topic. I've been talking to I know about this for the past few months. <laughs> Uh, and I yeah, I love talking about this too. Yeah, <laughs> it's really rare to actually hear a music teacher, like usually in in Malaysia, it's like music teachers that just teach uh, mostly more often than not in centers. Very few people yep. that do education, like primarily music education. Uh, then they'll work in yep. uh, what do you call that in schools. So yeah. you are really rare. Because you're working, <laughs> yeah. in, and it's not even your your target to do education, and yet you've landed one of the best experiences that at least I love. Because you know I study music yes, therapy, correct. so yeah. So first yeah. of all, how were the students? Mm-hmm. Okay, quite a lot of people when when they think about uh is that they know some of us they know like this is this is actually a prison school, right? So quite a lot of us label them as a bad student, correct? As a what? Bad student. Bad, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. But, but for me, uh, instead, instead of uh, judging them, giving a perception to them, um, labeling them, I choose to not believe that and throughout my experience there, they are not that bad, they are just naughty. What, uh, what's the difference though? What What's the... People think that... It, it's like naughty. When you say naughty, is that better than bad? Because a lot of people um, can't think like... People just think, okay, these people... These children went to Henry Gurney, so they did bad. So what's like bad? I think a lot of people can't really imagine what is bad or what is naughty. Can't differentiate. Okay. So what, what I've been observing... For the past few years, why did I call these students naughty? Because some of them, they what the things that they did, the crime that they did, they didn't really do it because they wanted to do it. Oh. Like some of them, some of them, like they did robbery, right? Uh-huh. They rob people because they don't really have money. They don't really have money to eat. Okay. Sometimes that that's just their crime. Um. This year, this year, when I gave out the uh, SPM result. The high school final exams, right? That's SPM? Yes. Okay, keep going. So, um, I, um, early this year, I gave out, I participated in giving the result of SPM to mm-hmm. the students. So, I heard one of the cases of this one boy. He did rock, he rock lah. But, um, the reason he robbed because uh, his brother or sister, I cannot remember which one, didn't eat for like three days. Damn. So he needs the money to feed, to feed uh, his siblings. Isn't it sad to hear? 
Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so that is why, that is why I say we cannot label them as bad because we are actually the cruel people because we don't really understand their situation. Like, how, how, how young are they? Why, why is it their responsibility to get money, you know? Actually, if you don't mind me asking, how young were they? I, mm-hmm. because I don't know what the age group is there. Um, the youngest I've met was like 12. 12? Like, like 12. Wow, okay. 12 years old, yes. The youngest 12. Um, the oldest were 21. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, okay. So, so the definition of naughty, okay, that is what people call bad, bad just now. Mm-hmm. The definition of naughty is because um, quite a lot of them did drugs. Okay. Uh, but for me, but for me, okay. So, so I did ask, I did ask few of them, why did they do drugs? Uh, these kids, they are very young, right? So mm-hmm. they are they are very involved with adults. Okay. So they did, uh, they did uh, spending uh, time with adults. And then this adult, they keep on, uh, sorry, some of adults, they did drugs in front of these kids. Mm. So that is why, that is why these kids are curious. What is so fun about doing drugs? Okay. You know? Yeah. So that is their mistake actually. But not really 100% their mistake. Okay? For me, it is not 100% their mistake. Okay. So that is why I call them naughty because they they are curious. They wanted to know how does it feel, so they try, and then after they try, they cannot stop. That is their mistake. But uh, the first time they tried, that is not their mistake, lah, for me. I mean, to be fair, we were all children, high school, yeah. primary school kids. So the only mm-hmm. difference is that we, I don't know. I I feel like a lot of people always forget that they tried, and they did. Everyone, yeah. I believe yeah. at least, according to Carl Jung's yeah. psychology, everybody has a dark side. It's just that a lot yeah, of correct. people aren't caught. It's, yeah. uh, you know? Correct. It's not wrong until you get caught. So they don't, they always think like, yeah. oh, these kids that got caught and put into um, Henry Gurney, these are the bad kids. But they forget that there are a lot of people that are actually worse, but they didn't get caught. And, yeah, uh, correct. And for all you listeners out there, if, if I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong, just ask me about this. Send me an email about this. I'd, be, I'd love to listen to your questions about this. So you said you went there to actually teach music. H- how was it there? Did they actually want to join music classes? Because, you know, when you say bad, uh, naughty, and people think bad students, they just don't want to learn anything. But you did mention before that they some of them want to learn. Or, can you explain that one? Okay, before I go to that, the students, the okay, the students that we have in Handy Guinea actually they are in two groups. Okay. Um they are in marching band and also band. Okay. okay? So in like, band they have their own teacher. In marching band they ha- they have their own teacher. Band as in like so, uh, orchestra band? Because I, I get a lot I get confused. Like people say band is in like, oh actually it's orchestra band so I don't know is this like a small band like not a, not exactly not exactly an orchestra just the guitar bass uh, keyboard um drum and also singer oh a, a pop band a a, rock, a small band lah like a five person band yeah thing. correct okay. correct uh-huh. basking is it I can say basking yeah uh, yeah I guess so yeah yeah all right so they have that two groups this um music department meaning meaning the music uh, kit in Handy Uh it has been already for like uh, 58 years when I come in mm-hmm. but during those 58 years there has never been a music lesson like proper music lesson sorry did you say days or years 58 years Fif- oh, wow <laughs> okay for that for that fifty for that fifty eight years, there has been no um proper music lesson for them. Okay, like like no no theory, yeah. no proper syllabus, something. No, nothing. Okay. 
Okay, and and I have to say this before I go to answering your question. Mm-hmm. I am the first unofficial music teacher that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. so the the first the first music lesson they have ever had was with me. Oh, to say to say it is to say it is challenging. It is quite challenging because quite a lot of them they they stop learning at the age of eight, sometimes twelve, maybe thirteen. You know, L- learning as in like learning what learning school. music in school. Oh, let's stop. Oh, yeah. They stop Let going to school at the age of thirteen, twelve, eight. Okay. So 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 it is very hard for them to actually accept that they are going to sit again in a class to take exam, uh, to take notes. You know, mm-hmm. it's a bit awkward for them. So 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 to say, um, challenging. It is quite challenging. But, um, my boys are very nice. They are sometimes hard to deal, but not all the time. And also, um, some of them really wanted to learn. Just some of them have to do this because there are no other better option. Because in Hanigini, you cannot enter Hanigini without doing nothing. So you have to choose one. So quite a lot of them choose music, but they they have to go through uh, something like, what do we call that, tapisan? Audition. There's a filtering system. There's an interview system. Yeah, correct. Okay. And what are the... If they other... didn't pass that one, they cannot uh, go in this department, music department. And what are the other options anyways? Like besides music, you said. Uh, so other than music, they have... Um, they have other like... What do we call it? Bank... Uh, bank care. Okay. Bank care like... Uh, maybe, maybe culinary... Oh okay. Um, there are some like electricity. Mhm. And then what else? Uh, there are there are also mechanical uh, works and all, right? Mechanical and yes, uh, sports school. Oh okay. Mhm. Yes, and also education. Nice. Like they they can sit for SPM. Okay. Yeah. So that that are the other options. So some of them they do they do they, they want to study anymore, so they come to music department because some of them really wanted to learn music. Ah. And and I can see quite a lot of them. Um, by the end of uh, they're like three years they have been there. They are a really good player, like very very good player. And we've actually uh. Uh, to to listeners out there, I know and I actually talked about uh not in depth, but we actually uh, touched a bit on the syllabus for what do you call that the syllabus for Henry Gunny's music education. My God, yeah. it was extensive. We we agreed that you know we were exchanging notes, and I realized that I have so I have graduated from SPM doing music, mm-hmm. and I've graduated from mm-hmm. diploma doing music. And I'm mm-hmm. now doing my degree, and then you showed me the, uh, not we you showed me as in like we talked about the syllabus, like you were asking me about Kronchong and all, and we realized that it was in between. Remember, it was in between. Yeah. It was something like above, above SPM, above mm-hmm. just in diploma, but it's under degree, so it's not at degree level. So that's, and and then now you say that some of them actually are uh, became good players, right? So. That's that's very good. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Uh they for me for me they already they already passed uh for diploma. Okay. Some of them can really read the, some of them can really read the score. From oh. zero, and then they can really read the score. Yeah. And then the pattern, their skill, very good. That that's really good, uh, especially with. You yeah. at the helm, and you actually know what to teach. But I guess the challenge is yeah. also, like you said, like there were no uh, existing music education, so you didn't. I mean, like you know what to learn as a student. 
So you, mm-hmm. but you didn't really know what to teach per se. You know what I mean? Like okay, yeah, correct. You know when uh, people graduate. First, yeah, when when people graduate like diploma degree, okay, you have to know uh, key signatures. You have to know this. You have to know basic uh, mu- music correct. technology, basic psychology, uh, performance level, mm-hmm. uh, oral mm-hmm. level. So it's I. How did you tackle that? Like how do you translate that into their education? Because you can't. Like you said before, you can't use a government school syllabus, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yes, correct. So what I've been doing was uh, there was two classes, okay, not only one. Mm-hmm. One class for the marching band. Another one class for the busking for the busking group. So for the busking group, I have a syllabus which is uh, SLBN. That is SLD N class. SLD N class, I have a syllabus because we have that NOS. We bought the NOS. There's, there's a format uh, for them to take the exam. Oh. Once they take the exam for this level two, this, and I, 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 uh, I teach level two. So uh, once they take the exam for the level two, once they pass, they can go to level three. After level three, they can take diploma straight away without SPM. Diploma so, in music. Um, yes, correct. Damn. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes. So this is another platform for students that the ones that 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 cannot learn actually. They can that didn't excel in studying. They wanted to pursue straight away to music. They can do it by taking this cert. Yeah, yeah. I said the end is by taking a cert. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an opportunity for them to be be- to change to be better. So I believe they can change to be better, and quite a lot of them ask me how to pursue. You know, mm-hmm. you can see, uh, you can see they are actually very interested to change. Coming back, coming back to our uh, conversation just now. So I teach two class. Uh, the first, the uh, sorry, the marching band class. I will have to do my own um, lesson plan. So it is why why it is not the same with uh, normal school because because of their background, uh, study, uh, education background. Like I said just now, mm-hmm. some of them they start they stop uh, learning at twelve. Some of them at thirteen or maybe as young as ten years old. So um, I have to teach music theory around grade one or grade two only. Okay. At least they can read the score to perform. Nice. Yeah. So um, this marching band uh, exists in Penjara because every time Penjara has a function, this marching band will perform. Oh, okay. Uh, as far as far as I can see, um, their score the hardest the hardest note they have in their score is just semi quaver and that is enough so that is why my music uh sorry my yeah my music lesson is just up until grade two only okay that makes for sense. them to just read but it is different with SLDN SLDN has a total different music lesson see yeah that's the thing that's the Thing that would confuse. I, I assume. Um, I don't know a lot. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be bold enough to say a lot. But at least there will be one or two people that will think that what's SLDN because we only know. Uh, I don't know. ABRSM, Trinity, yeah, Rock School. You know. Yeah, correct. So this is like very different. This is this is quite new because um, we learn from few places like Aswara and also there is this one academy in uh, Cyberjaya, FR Academy. Mm-hmm. So FR Academy ha- has been um, offering this as the end also um, great, uh, for level 2 and level 3 but for violins only, strings. Okay. Yeah, not, not banned. So the first SLDN with this level two band um, was in Handigani and it was um, by me. <laughs> nice, pioneer. 
<laughs> You're so uh, I've been doing quite a lot of study and also research and sources. That is why. You are really like a music hipster, like, you know, something was not existing, so it was so underground, I had to make one. <laughs> <laughs> because the boss, the boss, um, he asked me, what can I do? And also, the teachers, they went to uh, courses, but they didn't really know how to start seminar, mm-hmm. but they didn't really know how to do it. So they pass it down to me. Oh man, that that's that's kind yeah. of tough. Yeah. Yeah, correct. So I didn't really know anything. I have to do quite a lot of study, research, and also I have to find quite a lot of resources on how to teach them the music lesson, the question. It was very challenging, but very satisfying when I've done it. I will assume so. <laughs> I mean, it's not an easy thing, like you said. It's not a simple thing, right? Yeah. Uh, after after I agree to teach this, I have to go to seminars also. Quite a lot of seminars. Uh, to question and then to to get my music lesson that uh, I approve. Only I can teach them and only I can make the exam. We are going to to be observed by JPK. I cannot remember what JPK stands for. Oh, okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Something like kemahiran. Skills. Thank you so much for that. Hmm. Now the ultimate question. Honestly, this is like the yeah. the reason I, I wanted to talk to you about this. Uh. Yes. Does yes, yes. actually music help with their rehabilitation? Did they, did they like you said, they were from uh, naughty they weren't really bad. Some of them might have been bad. And then they did they become better? Did they improve in their uh, perspective on in life? As you notice, quite a lot of musicians realize that doing music um, actually helps us in a lot of things. One is attitude. Second is passion. And then, um, what else? Maybe you have to be hardworking to be good, right? Discipline. So for so yes, discipline. So for some of the students, because quite uh quite a lot of students, they really take the good thing about music. Meaning music teaches them how to be more patient and then music teaches them that it is not easy to be good. They need to be very hardworking, they need to have the discipline to be good. What I can say is we cannot really change people, but doesn't mean we cannot help them. It is their will, but it, it is also our influence in small little details we do in our life. So, so to answer to your question, partially yes and no. <laughs> okay. That is... Yeah. It- it's actually very strong what you say. It it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um. I I I would I would say this just because you know I actually study about this. It doesn't matter if a person has like a medical problems, mental problems, whatever. You can throw them to ten different doctors. If they don't want yes, to, if they don't want to improve, they just don't improve. You know what I mean? Yes, correct. Yeah. You were saying it does help though, right? For some, it's yes. For some, no. Okay. You know, you know. Uh, okay, right. Like you said just now, for the mental people, right? Mental health people. Sorry, people with those mental health problems. Mm-hmm. It is actually their will to change or not. Correct. Yeah, that's very true. So, so it is the same thing happen to these kids. If they really want to change they will take the good from this. That's really inspiring. Some of them, they just do it for the sake of doing it. They don't really think about they wanted to change. But some of them, uh, they really take the good in it and they really wanted to change for better. I mean, to be honest, I think that exists in uh, every spectrum, not just Henry Gurney, not just school. I mean, 
you, you that's correct even in our bachelors of music there will always be some people that that uh in in not even not only in music in any subjects they just want to oh i'm just doing this because it's easy i'm just doing this because it's fun yeah, correct. but then when correct. you know you have to be serious you have to put in a lot of effort and whatever they can't and then they're like complaining about it because they themselves don't have the will power like you said they need will power right so yes correct yeah it's really inspiring how how you said that the reason i ask is because there's actually mm-hmm. um i've been learning about uh music therapy in mm-hmm. prison in mm-hmm. norway if i'm not mistaken like a uh, uh, oh, okay. music therapist will actually take turns maybe like this six months uh we'll do mm-hmm. it with this band sorry not six months six years we'll do it with this band and then we'll mm-hmm. change therapist like a, another therapist takes over another band or whatever but essentially like you said mm-hmm. it's it's busking but it's busking in in with with a different focus of getting better it's not just oh my goodness i just have to be there you know because my yeah my uh this school wants me to learn music so whatever i'll just play music just for fun you know but it actually helps that's why i wanted to know i wanted to ask you about this and um it's really sad that you said uh for 58 years this is like the first time so now that you mentioned okay let's say at most it's 50-50 right 50% yep. it actually help uh 50% of the students actually improve in their rehabilitation and then 50% don't yes yeah. it's sad imagine those earlier people you know mm-hmm. like 50 years ago if they actually implemented what you did with going to seminars and actually writing down mm-hmm. studying all these things and like you say i, mm-hmm. I would assume uh, minimum you would take like uh i don't know a month two months to actually go through all the notes and then come up with a proper lesson plan yes correct so imagine if those people before this, i did this earlier mm mm-hmm. yeah not not only you the people like as mm-hmm. in like the students in henry gurney 50 years ago if they had someone like you maybe if like a a, a an older teacher had the same idea mm-hmm. and concept and especially drive as you like i i mm-hmm. i know for a fact that it happens to me too sometimes it's good it's great but sometimes it we i just fall short a bit because uh it's just too much you know so i mm-hmm, I, I, i know yeah it happens to a lot of people so i was just imagining like you said 50 years imagine like 50 years ago there was some a teacher like you that was willing to put up with all these kids and actually put in effort to make a proper lesson plan for the focus of helping these kids and imagine mm-hmm. imagine if you can go back in time and tell them you know what these kids are not like you said uh, these kids are not bad they're just naughty yeah or you would yeah yeah you would change a lot of my, well first of all i think you would be like uh you would be her- you would be like kicked out of the school <laughs> first of all people would say you're crazy you know like no these kids are bad that's why they're here so it would be very yeah correct Yeah, it's it's very um mature thinking lah. I would say. Yeah. So, um, for me, staying in Henry Gini, um, not only it teach, uh, not only that I have to teach students, but I teach myself to be a better human. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also in this rehabilitation for them. This um okay, so you ask me whether it helps them or not. So it it is actually their own will to change or not. But what can we do as a teacher to help? So that is a that is a really big question there for me. That's a, and that's a, actually a question that we should all be asking. It's not just oh, yeah. I'm just going to teach this kid because he's here and because I happen to be a teacher. It's You know. Yeah, you know what? Um I think some of them why they don't want to change or why they stay the same because they have this mindset if they go out if let's say they they say they wanted to change but the community doesn't accept that. 
that is what they are very afraid of, you know? Yeah, that's true. And that is actually their problem. Because of our community, our community judge too much. And I, so it is not really them. They have the will. But what can we do as a community? That's a very good question. Correct? Yeah. And yeah. The, the scary thing is like, okay, yes, our community, it starts off with the immediate area that you're in and then this country. But, Correct. you know, I, the scary thing is that it happens all over the world. When you say, yeah. when, when, when somebody says like, uh, I'm from prison, but I already got out and I did a lot of good and I actually improved, you know. But everybody's still like, oh, but you still went to prison though, you know. Yes. And it's, yes. yeah. That's, that's very helpful. And if you could like say someone, let's say somebody is listening, listening to this podcast and they were like thinking they could, um, mm-hmm. they want to go into this teaching for prison or... Mm-hmm. You know, not maybe not only Henry Gandhi, maybe in in a an actual prison or or something. Mm-hmm. Is there a way that uh, mm-hmm. you would suggest to them that they can start off doing this or that, or is there something that they could do? First and last, the step is you will have to be very inspiring because your job is to inspire them to be better. Not only in music, but this is our platform. We cannot really tell them, you have to be a very good people when you go out. Right? So, our way of saying, you have to be very good uh, in music. Meaning, we, we teach them how to be a very good player first. Only they can see that being a good player can make them a good human being. For me lah. <laughs> for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that actually helps. Thank you so much for your input and your advices and your insight especially. Yeah. yeah. It really <laughs> helps. And for all you listeners out there, as usual, if you want to ask a question uh, pertaining to this subject, pertaining to um, music in prison, uh, music and rehabilitation even you can shoot me a message at aminbob13 uh, at yahoo.com the email is actually in the description of this podcast and I'll either as usual ask Aino or ask any future guests or maybe I can get Aino back here who knows fingers crossed <laughs> thank you yeah. so much Aino yeah sure thank you so much for everyone tuning in to the podcast this week if you have any questions, you can send an email to me via aminbob13 at yahoo.com. The email is in the description of the podcast. Thank you so much and enjoy your week.